Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I looked at the texts for today, I had this, what I refer to as a preaching spasm. It's that I looked at what I should be preaching according to the Gospel, and then I looked at what I should be preaching from the rest of the texts. And then I looked at it again and said, well, what happened on Wednesday? And so I'm going, I'm going to confuse you all. Actually, I'm actually not going to confuse you. I'm actually going to only talk about one line in today's readings. One amazing line. The devil went away, and angels came and worshipped him, or waited on him, as the word is, the translation I use. Isn't that amazing? Forty days. Think about it. Forty days and nights. At the time of Jesus to fast was to not eat all day long. From sunrise to sunset. You didn't eat, you didn't drink, that was a fast. And then he ate something in the evening. But today's gospel tells us that the fast was 40 days and 40 nights. So can you imagine, here comes the devil. Jesus is tired, he wants some food. Mango cake would have been nice. <laughs> Thank you. There would have been something amazing of having that moment of going, okay, I'm tired. Would you go away? Or Jesus looking and going, enough already. I've already given you the answers other times, other ways. You know what the answers are. 
And still, Jesus is being tempted. Think about it. Who, who among you have fasted three days? Yeah, okay. I did it once and it wasn't a pretty picture. It wasn't a pretty picture at all. I can't imagine 40 days and 40 nights. Can you? Yeah. yeah. And then at the end of 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, and here comes the evil one, the devil, whatever translation of the word we want, Satan himself. Here he comes, and here comes Jesus walking along, tired as all get out, feeling a little shaky. I was shaky after two days, let alone three. Let alone forty. And here comes temptation. Oh, you can have the bread, you know, make, make bread out of the stones. Oh, hey, you can have those big cities. Oh, hey, you know, you can fall down and worship me and I'll feed you. Yeah. And each time Jesus said, simply put, no. And that last time when he's being tempted, oh, I'm really tired. I could really fall down and it would, I could just pretend. That's a, sort of our approach, right? And he says, no, I won't. And you shouldn't. And the devil gets tired and goes away. Aren't we glad he did? Because it's that last line. And the angels came and waited on Jesus. That's an important line because the devil said, you know, you should be, t you should jump down. You should fall off the pinnacle because the angels will save you. The angels didn't come and save Jesus. They did what we are called to do for one another, which is to feed one another. Not to tempt one another, but to bring people together and hold them close and give them the love that God gives us. The devil went away, and that's what God does for us. Strengthens us, brings us together so that the devil does go away, and that we are the voice of God in a world that is afraid and scared and angry and hurtful that we are the people of God, and in some ways, we're sort of the angels too. We're the ones that are getting out there. We're the ones. And the devil went away, and the angels came. I think the angels come to us in days and places don't expect. I'm going to tell you a story of Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, as you may know, was ashes to go. And one of the things that was rather remarkable, and I'm still amazed about it, is first the Asian American woman who was the first person to come, and she was, her eyes when she saw that we had ashes opened like, wow, can I get ashes? Yeah. 
and went away in joy. And that was amazing. The other thing that I found today, the one thing that I found more, well, actually two as a story that someone else told me and one other thing that happened, was that another woman came up to us and she had this distracted, she had the look of somebody who'd been starving themselves for 40 days and 40 nights. <coughs> I know she was going to work. I know that she was frustrated. She wanted to go to church. She wanted, but she was like focused this And then slowly she turned around and went, I can get ashes. <coughs> As you'll see me do more often now than ever, is that my hands were like this, as were surprisingly yours and Lois's hands were as well, because they were with me. And they were nodding their heads, and she looked at me and she said, oh good, I didn't know how I was going to get them, and I really need I never thought about anybody needing ashes, but we needed the end of the 40 days for her, or for us, the beginning of the 40 days. She came up to it and I put the ashes, remember a woman dust that you are, and to dust you shall return. Turn from sin to the gospel. No big deal, that's what I'd said to everybody else before. And she sighed and said, thank you for being here. And she was crying. It's what the church is called to do. It's what we are all called to minister to that person who might be in our midst, who might be, for that moment, be Jesus for us. It was Jesus. The other story that I would tell is that two of my friends, two of our friends who are deacons, synodical deacons, and we were out with ashes in their neighborhood. And they put at, gave ashes to a, a, a Hispanic woman and child. And as they were walking past a store, five people came running out of the store asking for ashes. And the devil went away. in all of those locations for us and we became their angels and they became Jesus for us. Isn't that amazing what the gospel does? Isn't it amazing what we as the people of God are able to do? And the devil went away. For that, let us say, thanks be to God. Thanks, uh, thanks be to God.
living in.